Hey, what's up guys? This is Dark Arm Duelist, and today I've got a little bit of a different deck for you guys. I did already post this deck on my YouTube channel before, but now with the addition of Dark Matter and some of the other cards that just came off the ban list, this deck just got way crazier. This is Heratic. Um, this is a Heratic deck profile, so let's get into it. I play four Vanillas in the deck. I play three copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon because it's good. I play one copy of the Heretic Seal of the Sun Dragon Overlord because you're always going to need four vanillas in the deck, in my opinion. I played it at five. I played it at three. I think four is the right amount of number because you can always make two and two unless you play, you know, one that costs three. Then I play one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon because Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon or, yeah, Darkness Metal Dragon. I was thinking Red Eyes Metal Dragon, but it's not. It's Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. He's really good in the deck because you play all dragons, except for like three cards, which we'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, then I play three copies of Heratic Dragon of Sue because Heratic Dragon of Sue is just amazing. It is essentially a mystical space typhoon, and if you control Heratic Dragon on your side of the field, you can tribute that monster to special summon this guy, which all the Heratic monsters have an ability that when they're tributed, you can special summon a vanilla, which is just a normal monster. So it's great, 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 because you're essentially playing three MSTs in the deck. Then you play three copies of Heratic Dragon of Tefnuit. Tefnuit's really good because he's essentially a cyber dragon in the deck, and you can special summon him if your opponent controls no monster, or you control no monsters and your opponent controls a monster. Excuse me, I got all messed up right there. It's a, it's a really good card because a lot of the cards in this deck are high level, and so you want something that you can just drop in the deck and be like, okay, I need to play something. I need to get some presents on board. It's really, really good. Then I play three copies of Heretic Dragon of Nebethy. Because Nebethy is really good because it, if you tribute a Heretic monster, and that can be with all these Heretic effects that tribute, um, that act trigger an effect, like the Sue, Sue's effect, um, it can be from hand also. You can tribute a card from your hand, which is really weird. That was one of the new mechanics with this card. But he lets you pop a monster or your opponent controls, which is really, really good. So you're essentially tributing a monster from your hand to special summon a card to your side of the field, keep him, and then, you know, go crazy. And if you do control a heretic monster, you can special summon this guy from your hand, which is really good um, by tributing that other heretic. So it keeps your combos rolling. So by tributing to special summon one, you're really getting two monsters. Then you play three copies of Heretic Dragon of Eset, which is the sun version of Nebethy, which is cool. But this one's a lot more interesting than Nebethy. I'm sorry, Nebethy. You know, I'm just, I'm sorry. But, you know, Eset's cooler. Um, Eset's cooler because you can normal summon it without tributing, and then if you control a vanilla monster that's a dragon, you can target it and make Eset and all your other Heretic Dragons on your side of the field that level which is really good. It makes your combos roll really quick. It makes you get your rank 8s. Super crazy. Um, then you play three copies of Heretic Dragon of Gabeb. Gabeb's really good because I can normal summon him, and if I'm playing against something like Burning Abyss and they leave, like, maybe Sir on field or, you know, Shadows and I want to attack into a face-down monster, I normal summon him, swing, and then I get special summon a Vanilla. But I'm not quite sure if it's the... Orb I have to summon, or if it's a blue eyes, if I can summon a blue eyes with this. But either way, that's why I do play one orb. Um, but it's really good because I can normal summon him and then tribute him with like, or yeah, tribute him immediately with um, Nebethy, and then activate Nebethy's effect, and you already got two um, level eights on the field, and you go into your combos. Now the next card I play is three copies of Maiden with Eyes of Blue. Now, this is a shield card in the deck. Everything else is really, really aggressive. The reason I play this is because it is a really big, big shield card. If it's targeted for a card effect, I can special summon a blue eyes. If it's targeted for an attack, it goes to the defense position, and you change the battle position of the monster, and it gets to special summon a blue eyes. So essentially, you're summoning blue eyes is like crazy. This deck is a blue eyes spam deck, by the way. Um, but you... You normal summon this, and it just, it lets you, it gives you an out if you're playing. A lot of people, I've seen people play Swift Iron Scarecrow in this deck, and I'm like, why are you going to banish that and then 
not have anything in hand. You play this and you normal summon it, and yes, it does waste your normal summon, but your opponent's gonna have a lot of problems getting over this. And that's why I think it's a $5 card right now. But the next card I do, that was all the monsters. Next card I play is, is one day piece. Because sometimes you just need a little piece of quiet. The reason I do play this at one is because you can only play one, of course, but the reason I really play this at one is because sometimes you do actually get a cloggy hand in this deck. And you know, this helps with the cloggy hands because you get a cloggy hand and you're just like, okay, I need an out. And you play one day a piece and you're like, okay, I'm not going to attack next turn. I get a draw and then I get a free turn without getting any damage. And I'm like, okay, that's essentially two cards without taking damage. And I'm like, that's, that's good. Um, then you play one monster gate because anytime your heretics are tributed, which this tributes a heretic monster, which, well, not specifically, it tributes anything. Um, when it tributes a monster, you can um, special summon, or you can mill cards off the top of your deck until, I think it's excavate now, but you can excavate cards off the top of your deck until you get a monster. And then you can special summon that monster. And I really wish this was at more than, you know, one, but I guess it's not for reasons. And speaking of reasons, you play three copies of reasoning, you know, because you can make your opponent call a level, and if it's between 1 and 12. And then if they call it wrong and you flip a monster that can be normal summoned or can be special summoned by not by its own card effect and it just says, you know, you can normal summon this guy or you can't do like BLS or something like that. But if you activate this and they call it wrong, they say like, okay, I call 4 and I flip a blue eyes, I special summon blue eyes to my side of the field. And it really gets your combos going. Like I said, you get cloggy hands and this makes no clog. It's like a plunger. This card is a plunger. Um, then you play the draw engine of the deck. You play three copies of trade in. Trade in is really good in this deck because if you do, it does not matter where any of these guys are. Okay, as long as they're not banished, it's okay. You're like, okay, I I have this in hand. You know, I don't have anything else. Okay, trade in. I don't need it. If it's in grave, I can still grab it. If it's in hand, I can get it. I've already got it. If it's in my deck, I can still special summon it with any of my heretics, so it does not matter. It's just a great card to have. Then you play the triple reinforcements of the army of the deck, pretty much. Um, Convocation is really good because it makes it so you're playing like a 37 card deck if you actually draw it. I've actually drawn into two of these in one instantly, almost, because my opponent was just like, okay, you got too much field presence, I'm, I'm out, I can't do this. So it's a really good card to have in the deck, and I love that they brought this back to three. I don't even know why they put it at two. Then you play three copies of Silver's Cry. Wait, where's my other copy of Silver's Cry? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Wait, there it is. There it is. I'm not gonna cry. Um, Silver's Cry is good because it's essentially a monster reborn. It's a monster reborn for your normal monsters. Is if this this is gonna go to the grave a lot, like I said, with trade in. And if I send it to the grave with trade in or by removing its next XYZ material or it gets attacked over. I go Silver's Cry and I get a material. This is pretty much just materials. Now, here's my interesting tech card, okay? All the duelists do it. You know you got them. So here's my tech card. Three copies of Dragon's Mirror. And you're not gonna get it until I tell you. The reason I play three copies of Dragon's Mirror is because of five-headed dragon. I like playing big monsters. And you know, when you play a 5K beer, you're gonna win unless they magic cylinder you and then you cry, which has happened. But it's a really, really good card. You banish five cards. And this is the reason that Dark Matter, which I'll get into in a minute, is good because you can send three dragons from your hand to the graveyard and you already detached one. So that's one and then three, which is four, and you probably already tributed some with your heretic, so you're gonna have plenty in your grave. You draw two of these, your opponent might as well scoop. And that's all for the main deck. Now the extra deck is this. Okay, I play one Dark Matter. Dark Matter is amazing. I might bump it up to two. I will probably bump up the next card that I play up to two also. May. I don't know yet. Uh, I play one number 107 Galaxy Eyes Techion Dragon because Techion Dragon lets me have access to Dark Matter. And playing a 4k beater is just the shit. And then I play two Heratic Dragons of the Sun Dragon, or Heratic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis. Heliopolis is amazing because I contribute other Heratic monsters or other cards that are monsters. 
and then pop cards on your side of the field until you have nothing. And I've comboed this guy and this guy together. Three plus five is 8,000. That's game. Now, the next guy I play is two copies of Felgrand Dragon the Divine Knight. When I know you're going to play stun, I'm going to play this guy a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. He's a really good card because he protects my five god dragon. Or five headed dragon. Not thinking Japanese. I play one giant grinder because sometimes you just need to pop some stuff and inflict some damage. It's just really good. Then I play one Gaia Charger because I do play one Atem and he's good to overlay really quick. I play one Atem because I do play a couple of sixes in the deck and I like to have some diversity. I don't just like playing a bunch of, you know, eights and get cloggy and not be able to make a play. Um, I play one Constellar Pelides. Pelides is good because he lets me bounce stuff. And I play six um, level fives in this deck. So it makes it really easy to go into Pelides. I play one rank four. Um, Queen Dragon Dujin, or Queen Dragon Jin because Queen Dragon Jin is just good because he, she lets me special summon some other dragons. Then I do play two synchros. I play two eight, um, Azure Eyes White Dragons or Silver Dragons. Because he's, again, a monster reborn, and if I can get him and five-headed dragon on my side of the field with maybe dark matter. Where's dark matter? Dark matter? Nope, not dark matter. Where's dark matter? There's dark matter. Um, if I can get him and dark matter on field, I've, again, pretty much won because you can't target him by card effects. And then I play two copies of five-headed dragon. Because five-headed dragon, if I can get both of these on the field, because I've done it before with this deck, with this exact build, with... It's you you can't win. You just can't win. It's it's over. You might as well scoop. Unless you have like Rageki or Dark Hole and then you just scoop. And anyways, guys, that is my heretic blue eyes deck profile. Um don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like it up and share it all over the place. I appreciate it and thank you for all the views you've given me over the six months that I've had my channel. Thank you guys. Bye.